All right, welcome to Adobe Photoshop. And if you're like me, I absolutely can't stand the default settings for the workspace inside of the program. So the very first thing that I do when I get into the program, and look, it can be difficult in the beginning because you're not used to using it, so you don't know what you're gonna use. But I'm gonna give you some hints. Now, I'm a photographer. What a graphic designer, what an illustrator is going to set up as far as the program is going to vary. And you could tell that because if you come over here to the workspaces and you click on it, notice you've got essentials, one for somebody who does 3D, somebody who does one for motion, painting, photography, graphic design. Now I've changed this from essentials, which is the default to photography, because this is where we're gonna start. But we're also gonna change the toolbars over here, because guess what? There's a bunch that I don't ever use, and they're all nested inside of each other, which is a pain in the neck to have to nest and then go find one. So we're gonna pull out everything that we use and just have one simple clean toolbar and make life a whole lot easier. So how do we do this? Well, it's really, really simple. Let's start with our toolbar. So we're gonna go up here to edit and we're gonna drop down to toolbar. Now, anything that we have that we don't want, we can simply click on it and drag it over here. This doesn't get rid of it. You have these three little dots over here that we see. If you click on these three little dots, it will bring up all the tools that we kind of are disregarding. So if you did need to get one, it is pretty easy to get over there. So let's see what we're gonna use. I never use this. I never use this. I never use this. Let's see, object selection tool. I don't use quick selection tool anymore. I sometimes use the magic wand. Crop tool, I never use perspective crop. I never use the slice tools. So we're just gonna simply delete those. And if you don't know what they are, feel free to just delete the ones that I delete. If you need to add them back, you can simply just add them back. It's not a big deal. Frame tool, occasionally I will use it. So eyedropper I'll use. 3D material, I don't do anything in 3D, so we don't need that. The rulers I use. Uh, notepad tool, I didn't even know that existed, it must be new. I don't use this, so we'll get rid of that. So we've got spot healing, remove, healing brush, patch tool, all that stuff I will use. Now, what we're gonna do right here is, there's all these tools, and when a bunch of tools are in a single box, they're gonna be nested. So they're gonna have that little triangle that we see over here, and you have to kind of click on it to go out. What I want is for each one of these tools to be their own thing. Actually, I don't use the red eye tool. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of drag this out until it gets a little blue line and it will be on its own little area. So we're gonna do that for all of these tools because I do use these all and I want them all to be separate. So boom, now all these tools are gonna to have their own little area. So if I come up here and I wanted to do that to any of these, this is something that I could easily do. I'm all right with this being nested because I very rarely use that one brush. So I've got the brush tool, I don't use the pencil tool. Replacement tool, I don't use that. Mixer brush, I don't paint, so I don't use that. Got the clone stamp, and I don't use the printed stamp tool. Uh, history tool, I don't very rarely use that. So eraser tool, maybe. Background eraser, no. Magic eraser, no. Gradient tool, yes. Paint bucket tool, not really. Green material, no. Blur tool, no. Sharpen tool, no tool oh. dodge and burn I do you use it occasionally sponge I don't use then we've got the pen tool the freeform pen tool I'm just gonna leave all these together I very rarely use them but sometimes I do so if they're nested it's not a big deal we've got these occasionally I will use these we're gonna leave them nested because I'm just usually using horizontal type path we're gonna leave the path up there but for me, using a path is gonna be very rare, but I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. These tools, I'm gonna to leave all nested because that's how I like them. The hand tool and the rotate tool, I'm gonna bring rotate out in case I do need to use them. And then we have the zoom tool. Now down here, we have these tools. I don't use the quick selection tool, I use different versions of it. So if I just click on it, it's deselected and it won't be shown over here. If I click on it, it's gonna appear back, but I'm gonna turn that off. The rest I'm gonna leave. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. So I'm gonna save preset, and I'm gonna call this JCW tool. 
You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. You can see I already have one up there. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. If you ever do need to go back or you want to change and make another one for, let's say you're both a photographer and a painter and you want different toolbars, you can save them. That way you can toggle back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And now you can see this is a whole lot better. Just the tools that I have are going to show up there. Now let's go ahead over here to the right side and do this for the same thing here. So I'm, remember, I did this preset up right here under the workspaces for just photography. We're going to go ahead and change this. So I'm going to manipulate the windows. And the first thing I need to show you is kind of how to do this. So I'm going to pull actions out. All right. If you have a window and you want to put it as a tab inside of a window. So notice we have history and you want to tab it. All you have to do is drag it in. And when it turns blue, you let go. Then you have history and actions. So you can tab inside of each other. Okay. In my case, I want actions in a different spot. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this over. This is a column. This is a column. And I'm going to create a third column. I'm just going to drag this over. So you see that long blue bar. That's going to create a new column. Boom. That's there because I have so many actions. Okay. I'm going to close this up. You can close and open windows by this little teeny tiny double kind of arrow. So I'm going to click that. We'll close it up. You can just kind of open it up like that if you like. The next thing we have is we have these windows here. Now I don't use the histogram or the navigator. So what I can do, if I just wanted to close one, I would hit close. But if I want to close both of those and get rid of that, I can hit close tab group. Both will be gone and bam, just like that, we're there. So libraries I don't want, so I'm going to hit close and it's just going to get rid of the one. Adjustments here, I just use this. There are some new presets that we have right there. I don't need it. So I have all this space that's not being used. So what I can do is come down here, watch the little icon change to this double arrows. When you do that, you left click and you drag up and you let go. Some of these won't let you do it, but most of them were good. For right now, I'm not gonna be using channels or paths. So for right now, let's go ahead and get rid of and I want layers over here and to have a whole spot over there. Adjustments, I actually don't want there. I want it here where history is. And I don't know if I'm going to move history to a new spot. I probably will, but for right now, we're good. So I don't want properties and info on the same thing. So let's go ahead and clone source. Let's get rid of that because we don't want it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the info panel and I'm just going to drag that out and put it on its own little spot. Then we're gonna properties, and you can see properties is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some more space. Actually, I'm gonna give it a lot of space because we don't need it. History, let's move history to a new spot. So I'm gonna take the history, I'm gonna drag it down here, and we'll give it a little more room, just like that. So now you can see what I'm doing. I'm moving these windows around. I know how I like them. And once I get everything in here that I want, we can then save that. So I've got actions here. I am thinking about doing something and I've never done it before. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a workspace um, because I already have this created where I take this toolbar and I'm going to move the toolbar over here in between the actions. See that blue line? Boom. And then I'm going to have the toolbar located over here. I don't have to go all the way across the window to this little spot. Am I going to be able to work like that? I don't know. I've been spent 30 plus years working with the toolbar on the left hand side, but it kind of makes sense to have everything over here. So I'm going to try that. So I've got all these windows set up exactly how I want. These are the main windows that I use when I'm editing inside of photography. Do I bring some other ones up? Yes. And I can create a workspace for just those because I can easily toggle back and forth between the two. So if you want to create a workspace, now that I've saved everything, we're going to come back over here, click on this. And now we're going to do new workspace. And we're going to add the toolbar, the menus, and the keyboard shortcuts, because you can change your keyboard shortcuts, but we're not going in that today. So it's going to save all this. And I'm going to call this ACW toolbar right. That way I know that I have the toolbar over here. I'm going to hit save. 
So what could happen is if I go to essentials, you can see it's going to reconfigure the windows and I can come back up here, click on this and go to my new one that I've created, which is toolbar, right? And boom, just like that, it sets it up perfect. That's how you set up the screen to make your workflow just a little bit better and to get rid of all that junk that you don't use. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have and could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.